Hey guys! Welcome back to this weekly series where I buy an unusual phone, unbox it, play around with it, durability test it, then I smash it. No, I don't have to keep on discreetly saying what this series is about to let new fans know because I'm on top of this series on this channel. Why did I call it board smashing grocery store phones again? Meh, it's probably not important. On this episode, this phone definitely didn't come from a grocery store. And since this package has been sitting out in the garage for five days already, I can finally film this video. So let's get started on this episode of Board Smashing Grocery Store Phones. Or for this episode, Board Smashing Gucci Store Phones. Ah, it's a pixelated mess! Woo, the contents on the bottom are still good. So what's in these unique looking boxes? It's the new Motorola Razr Photic smartphone that costs $1,500. Yep, this is board smashing Gucci store phones. You know it's expensive when the box has a screen protector. And yes, I did buy two of them. No, I'm not having a midlife crisis. At 21. I bought these when they were on sale for Mother's Day. It was buy one, get one free. So it was $1,500 for the both of these. So I'm only a little bit insane. Do I intend to give one to my mom? I'll go into more detail on what I plan to do with them later. But don't worry, this is what I did for my mom on Mother's Day. Wasn't that sweet? So these are all mine! I bought these Android phones with my new Apple card! And boy, that was an experience, because I'm pretty sure there's built-in Android purchase protection on every Apple card. Let me explain. I put my Apple card number into the Motorola website, and when I hit buy, it gave me an error. Then I tried my PayPal account with my Apple card, and that also didn't work. Then I texted Apple Card support about the problem, and after multiple texts, they told me to just call them. Then I proceeded to be on a 20 minute call. Most of it was hold time. Then they finally approved the transaction, and I was able to buy the phones. But it didn't end there. The next day, I woke up to a voicemail from Apple Card support telling me to call them. When they answered, they wanted me to confirm the purchase again, and made me answer security questions. All to make sure I wanted to buy Android phones. Thanks for looking out for me, Apple, but I am a fully grown man-child. I'm just saying, I bet there will be no problems if I use this to buy a fully maxed out Mac Pro on their website. Enough talking. Time to unbox. <laughs> Carefully. Ooh. Ah, you gotta save that seal. Ooh. Oh. Oh. Wow. Nice. And now for the other one. Ah! Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm. Oh, look at here. We have the phone. Oops. What's included? Oh. Instructions? A shoelace USB-C cord? Mmm. Brick. Some USB-C Hershey Kiss earphones. Disgusting. Carrying case for really small glasses? I don't know. Mmm. Smaller Hershey's Kisses, and then even more Hershey's Kisses. Who needs this many commas? And a stupid USB-C to headphone jack converter, which will be useful for my iPad Pro, so I'll be keeping this. And that's everything. This box doesn't look like it'll be fun to destroy at all. This top part didn't need a screen protector at all! 
Come on, socks with sandals. Don't fail me now. Ooh, there's a little stress reliever in here. Mmm. Oh, I get it. It's like a little phone stand that amplifies sound. But you can't charge from it, so... Oh, yeah. As you can probably tell, I'm planning to keep one. Can you guess which one? I'll give you a hint. I got one in an ugly color for the lols, cause I was gonna destroy it anyway. The reason I wanted to keep one is because I find folding smartphones intriguing. And this is the first time I'll be experiencing one. Oh yeah. And the hype has died down. I actually did experience a folding smartphone in episode seven if you count that thing as a folding smartphone. Also, when I had that old iPhone 10 with the broken face ID and saw the new Motorola Razr when it was announced, I was actually, well, probably, gonna switch to Android because of how cool this phone looked. But then Motorola delayed the release of the Razr for a month. I became impatient, so I just bought an iPhone 11 Pro instead and I don't feel like switching anymore. So, I'm gonna keep this one around and use it like an iPod Touch. Who knows? Maybe if the experience is great, I might switch to it and use it as my main phone. But don't get your hopes up too high, Android fans. Let's see what my first impressions will be with this one. By booting her up. M&Ms, powered by Android. Hi there, start. Don't plan on activating it. Can we skip that? Fine then, I won't have an emergency then. Oh, uh, heart attack, Ah! Uh. Whoa, it's so weird. I can probably do this all day. You can hear the screen popping while it creases though. Our Wi-Fi doesn't reach from here, so skip for now. All right, let Google follow me everywhere. Fingerprint reader, the first phone on this show of that. Yes, let Verizon follow me too. And let Verizon have access to my entire phone. Yes. Just don't go into my Japanese folder. And we're in! Okay, Google. Who is Plain Rock 124 Of course you have to sign in. Oh yeah, I don't have Wi-Fi either, I'm stupid. How do you go home? Oh. Android things. What apps are on here? One, two, three, four, five. Five bloatwares on this. Why is there a whole app dedicated to wallpapers? Not too many wallpapers. Let's take a look at the camera. Hmm. I'll keep that in mind. Ugh, this screen's so tall it's like impossible to reach stuff at the top. Let's try the selfie camera first. Wow, I look clear. I did spend $1,500, so... All right, close the phone, and then to activate the front camera. Yes, got it on my first try. I can easily take selfies with the main camera, so the selfie camera on the inside is kind of useless. Three, two, one. How do you take a photo? Oh, just tap. Let's try a video, too. Hey, guys. Right now, I'm recording on the Motorola Razr front-facing camera. No way, it's the rear-facing camera, but right now it's the front-facing camera, so I don't know what to call it. Uh, video over. And the video quality doesn't look bad. But again, $1,500. And it's recording in landscape mode, so this would be kind of cool to vlog with. On something like this, you would have to turn it sideways, and then you would just risk dropping it because of how hard it is to hold, but you just have to hold this like this. And it's easy. Oh yeah, you can also like vlog with the flashlight on so you can see your face even in the dark. This is actually a really good vlogging camera choice. Alright, it's a little bit later. I'm on the porch so the phone can get Wi-Fi for the next part of this video. Hey Google, who is Plain Rock 124? Hey Google, who is Plain Rock 124? I did connect it to Wi-Fi for that. <laughs> but instead, what's gaming like on this phone? 
I can't think of any relevant mobile games right now, so we're just gonna play Mario Kart Tour. And install. Also, while I was setting it up more, I kept wanting to push this button to go home. They really should have made this a physical home button. Install. Okay, can we play Mario Kart now? Viewing full screen. To exit, swipe down from the top. What? What does that even mean? Gotta sign in. Download. This might take a while. Alright, how do I play multiplayer? There it is. Creepy, but okay. Okay, I haven't played this game in several months. Let's see how I do. Ah, oh, damn it, damn it, damn it. Go, 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 go. No, f off. F off. Ah, oh, damn it. Now you're gonna see a rage quit on this phone. Mmm. Yes, that felt good. So much satisfying. Honestly, it's so thin, it's kinda uncomfortable to hold like this. How's the video viewing experience on this? Alright, the borders are bigger than usual because this is a very narrow and tall screen, but you can just zoom in and then there it fills it, but it cuts off a lot of content, so yeah, I would watch it just zoomed out too. I do the same on my iPhone 11. Video borders really don't bother me to be honest. There's no stereo speakers in a phone this expensive, so I'm kind of disappointed about that. Alright, and I saved the best for last. Oh, what? YouTube is picture on picture on Android? Oh, I want to switch now, kinda. <laughs> okay, so I just noticed this. Why, after I connected it to Wi-Fi and signed in using my Google account, why did it download all these stupid games? Especially that one. Candy Crush, Coin Master, Game of Thrones, Guns of Glory. I never downloaded these apps before on any other Android phones before. Is this a normal thing with Android? <sighs> I opened that trash game for like a minute and it's sending me notifications to try to get me back already. But as I was saying, I saved the best for last. There's a special mode on this phone. Just gotta put it in the control center. And when you tap Retro Razor, it turns the OS into the first Razor phone. What can we do here? Recent. And it just takes me to the phone app. Messaging, I assume that yeah, it takes you to a messaging app. Menu button. Oh, there's the Hello Moto thing. Hello Moto Moto. Oh, you can dial a number from here, and the screen changes only to when you're dialing a phone number. Imagine an old person who doesn't know how to use the phone's OS and has to switch it to retro mode to call 911. Now, can you tear off the phone by holding down the end call like in old flip phones? Oh, yes, you can. Nice. Whoa, whoa. And there you have it. It's basically an Android phone that can take up half the space when you're not using it. Going back to something I said earlier, this is basically a midlife crisis phone. Shut up. Anyway, I'll see what the long-term experience will be like with the other one I'm keeping. If you're interested on updates, I may post several, or none at all, on my Twitter. Follow me anyway. But for now, let's have some fun with some tests. No, not that type of tests. Definitely not that type. Durability tests. Mmm. But wait, a challenger approaches also after wedding in the garage for five days. Who will be the most durable folding phone? Will it be the Motorola Razor? Or will it be the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip? Hell no. I didn't buy a Samsung Galaxy Z Flip. Do I look like a channel of 2 million subscribers? Maybe if Samsung does a buy one go on free sale. But the challenger will be the cheapest working original Motorola Razor I found on eBay. Yay. Now that's more 1 million subscriber budget friendly. Razor versus Razor. Will being newer and never used win? Or will having simpler tech and build win? Let's find out. First test up is the scratch test. Start a video on this one. Let's go! First up, I'm gonna do closed and backside. Oh, it hurts! Damn it! Stay! No! The $1,500 phone! Still recording. Save that. Now we're gonna do closed, 
front side down. Start a video on this one. I don't want it to get ran over. The camera's already shattered. And the video stopped. Let's start that again. This keeps on flipping. Oh no. The camera bump is completely gone, but it's still recording. And the only damage I see on this one is that there's this piece missing, whatever this hole is for. Now we're gonna do one lap with both of them open and face down. Video on this one. Oh. Oh, I can't take it anymore. Oh my god. Well, I decided to cut this test short, but apparently I didn't cut it short enough. Let's just pick these up and go home and oh look, this one still works. <gasps> so yeah, old razor just scuffed up. Not even the camera's cracked. Front screen's okay too. And yeah, still turns on. And the new razor. Ah, uh, screen can't even close all the way now due to that. The main display still works though. As you can see, I'm scrolling, you can see Wow, that's how many alerts that trash game sent me trying to get me to play again. Oh my god. Swipe up to unlock. One, two, three, four. Yes. Yeah, even though I can unlock it, I still can't import any of the photos or videos because you have to like put it in a file transfer mode every time, which is stupid. But what we can do is view the videos on this beautiful screen. So yeah, this is how I'm gonna import the videos. I love how it changes from color to black and white for some reason. Here's it face down. Yeah guys, aren't you sad that I can't import these clips? Remember how I said that Nokia smartphone was the weakest smartphone because it failed on the scratch test since the display stopped responding after it? Well this display has it much worse, so this might be the new weakest phone on this series. Now for the drop test. I'm still gonna start a video on this thing. Backside. Closed. Three, two, one. Back cover flew off the old one, probably no problem. Still working. And the new one. Oh my god. The front display is now completely shattered after a backside drop test for some reason. But hey, that drop made the screen close flushly again. Opening it up. Yeah, same old, same old on the inside. Now we can only judge this phone if it turns on at all now. Closed! Corner drop. Three, two, one. Same old, same old on both of them. Nothing much changed. Now the closed front facing drop. Three, two, one. Old Razer, yeah, battery cover fell off, whoa, how special, still working. And the new Razer? Well, there's now glass on the ground. You can see more into the phone now, there's like a microchip there. Still kinda working though. I think the front display is completely dead. I can't see any more pixels on it. Now if them open, backside drop test. Three, two, one. Oh good, even more glass. Old Razer, once again, yeah, perfectly fine. New Razer, more glass from that screen and this screen, still like this. All right, open corner drop test. Three, two, one. White screen on this one, but probably can be fixed by removing the battery, yep. Perfectly good. New one, same old, same old, just more glass missing. Finally, the open face down drop test. Three, two, one. Old one, still good, still can make emergency calls if I really wanted to. Front screen, still good too. New one, there are now bigger black spots on the OLED display. Other than that, still can open and close, which is probably the best it's got going for right now. Now it's time for everyone's favorite drop test, the ludicrous drop test. First up, the Razer. 
closed. Three, two, one. Perfectly good. Now with it open. Three, two, one. Wow, finally caused some damage to it. As you can see, the screen still kind of works, but now if you see right here, there's some dead pixels. But that's pretty much it. Now the new razor with it closed. Oh, there's gonna be glass everywhere. Three, two, one. Oh, ow. I think it landed on a rock or something, because now there's a huge dent in the plastic back. Ooh, hopefully that doesn't mess with the internals. It's also kind of splitting apart. Can we close that? Yes, we can. Can it still turn on? Barely now. Now with it open. Ooh, this might be where it dies. Three, two, one. <laughs> It landed perfectly like this. But as you can see, the screen still kind of turns on. It's really dim now for some reason. The front display is also gonna come out. But at least it still works. Now for the fourth test. The water test. Did this just die? I think this just died from me holding it. Oh wait, I gotta work it again somehow. So yeah, the water test. Which razor would survive after Hannah Baker from 13 Reasons Why uses it in her bathtub? Motorola says that the new razor can handle moderate exposure to water, but I don't think it has that advantage anymore now. Let's find out! Uh, eh. The old razor turned off, but the new razor is still working, with the bottom part of the screen now completely lit up. Not responding to button presses. Oh, there goes the new razor. Let's get them out. Oh, the new razor is still showing some life. Oh, there it goes again. And I heard it hissing. Will this still work? No response. All right, so I think this is the new Razor's first win. Oh, and there's the time. It is 5.05, so yeah, this thing still kinda works. Oh, <laughs> whoa. And now I'm just gonna run over both of them just because I feel like it. Very scientific test. Some pieces of metal broke off, a hinge is broken, the front screen is cracked, the front glass is cracked, and the camera is cracked. On the new one, I don't really see much more damage. I can see it still works a little bit. So the new Motorola wins the running over test that I just came up with. This is a fun test to do of all flip phones. <laughs> Easy on this one. But what about this one? Gonna need some protection for once. Three, two, one. It already easily bends back farther than it should. Let's keep on going. Ah. There we go. Those are some cool looking internals. OLED display. Oh, the old Motorola Razor's trying to speak. Shut up, no one cares. Now I'm gonna try to remove the batteries from the new one. Ah! Let's try the push method, oh god. Got the battery out, along with its motherboard. Carefully separate it from its motherboard. Oh, this does not feel good to peel. Oh, now for the other half. Here goes the front display. Gonna need some tools for this. Yep, now I played smart. Now we're just back to the push harder method. And there's the other one. Old Motorola Razor battery removal. 
Yeah, there's really nothing left to destroy on the new Motorola Razr after that battery removal. As for the old one, now this episode is complete. What even is this series anymore? And there you guys have it. Folding smartphones are the future. No, not really. There wasn't really any content in this video to prove that hypothesis. Which is what basically every episode of Board Smashing Grocery Store Phones is. If this is your first episode, welcome. It doesn't get any better. You should still watch the entire playlist to catch up though. I'm gonna play with my new Motorola Razr now. And so with that, thank you guys for watching. Comment, like, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys later. Bye. Oh man, I scratched the screen. Fingerprint scanner. USB-C. Camera. Beautiful OLED display. $1,500. I'm bored of it now.